Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So continuing looking at uh, our videos on SAP UI5 and focusing on the use case of HANA native development, um, let's take a closer look at consuming OData v2 services. So primarily those provided by XSO data probably and uh, see how we can utilize uh, them in our user interface. Now, of course, two videos ago, we did already see an example, but, but there we did uh, uh, dynamic initialization and, uh, and we, we bound it um, in our code. Uh, let's see some actually more simplified approaches to consuming uh, a basic OData v2 service. All of our stuff from the previous. And what we wanna do here is I, I think we've seen the basic structure operation of, of creating an application. You've seen how we copy around and repeat a lot of parts from one um, from one application to another. So rather than go through all those steps yet again, I've prepared a, uh, a little skeleton project. And incidentally, I mean, even when I'm coding something new, personally, this is what I tend to do. I, I keep a couple of little uh, empty skeleton projects out in my private GitHub, and I usually just bring those in to, to get me started. Uh, so that's what we have here, one called OData Basic. We download that so we have it, and then let's come back over here to our resources and do an import. Data basic, and I think I'll put this basic. Extract that. Oh, and okay. So sometimes my zip files have the uh, the lead folder in them, and sometimes they don't. I, I tend to go ahead and add it during import to make sure that I don't overwrite other files, and then it's easy to clean up here uh, if you import it as I did into a subfolder. So let's just go ahead and cut those and put those into my main folder. Because so we only need an OData basic and then we want our general structure inside there. And we just go rid of the this redundant folder. So what you see here is the same core structure uh, as our other applications. We've got our index HTML, our bootstrap, our startup code, initialize our component. We have our component JS, still not a whole lot going on in here, mainly loading most of its information from the metadata, uh, from the manifest JSON, and then we have the manifest JSON, but I've put the core structure in here um, with the IETN, uh, I do have some language, uh, uh, language specific text strings in here, I've done all that for you, but, but I've left the, uh, the main parts uh, for us to do together here now. Uh, so unlike the uh, example that we did two videos ago, we're not going to dynamically initialize our OData service at, um, at runtime using the component, uh, uh, using the controller. Instead, we're gonna define it in advance here declaratively within, within the manifest. And this is honestly how you do it most of the time, if you can. I mean, our other application was wanting to dynamically load different OData services. It was a really generic tool. It's showing you a, a pretty powerful but pretty advanced technique. This is um, uh, this is much more likely uh, what you're to do, uh, which is to come here in your uh, app itself and then declare a section for your data sources. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and do that here. Uh, data sources. Uh, that uh, was already there. And we can get rid of this to do. We don't want that in there. And inside our data sources. Yeah, let's just our other one. We'll declare uh, an alias for our OData service. We'll call it BP for business partner service. Okay. And then we'll have some configuration on it. Actually, uh, I'm off a little here. There we are. And 
we're going to need a URL to access this. And it's within our same application, so it'll be a relative URL pointing to our other uh, our uh, uh, XSJS module. Business partners dot XSO data. There we are. So our base URL. Then we're going to need to tell it what type of service this is. Well, it is an O data service. And then we're going to have some settings. Basically, the only setting we're going to use right now is to set our OData version to version 2.0. Okay, that looks good. So now we've created a, a, a service object with its URL and its, its configuration. What we want to do now is we want to bind this service to a model. Uh, so we'll come down here to our models section. We've already created uh, a default model, which is a JSON model. I, I tend to do that different configuration, screen input, output parameters. Um, I actually have a dedicated configuration model and a resource model here for my text strings. But let's come here, this other to do, and let's add uh, a model here, BP model, business partner model. And we're going to have to tell it what data source we want to use. Well, we're going to want our data source of our BP service. So we'll take the name here. And that is going to be our data source. So we're not directly putting the URL in the, um, uh, in the model, but just uh, pointing it to a, a data source that we've already defined. Now we want to tell it the type of model that we want to create, similar to the way that we told it the type of service. This is going to be an SAP UI model OData v2, OData model, and a couple other settings here. Preload, let me say true. Preload the metadata, and then other settings. Use batch, and I'm going to say false on that because of the structure of my service, the way I'm going to use it. I'm not going to allow it to use batch. I am going to tell it that it needs to use JSON. Remember, um, XSO data in the XS Advanced environment does no longer support Atom XML, but Atom XML is the default format. Um, so we need to make sure we get that dollar sign format equals JSON added on. We can have SAP UI5 automatically add that for us. We don't need to parse that into the URL. Uh, part of using the O data model is just being able to set settings like that to say JSON true, and then it will build that into the URL automatically anytime that it calls it. We'll say default. Binding mode, we want to support two-way binding. So this is preparing us for down the road where we could do updates as well. And then we'll say default update method. We want to use put operations for any updates. because That's what XSO data supports. So we'll save that. Uh, I can do a beautify. Let's make it a little nicer to look at. And we have our OData service definition, its configuration into a model. So now we're ready to see how we can consume that. Um, we already have uh, a view created here. It's got a, a smart table uh, that we're going to want to bind to our um, to our model but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our controller here and in our init we're going to add the model binding to the table right here I, I put a lot of the boilerplate you know error handling initialization of the models uh, but the real logic here is really just the binding to the table 
So let's uh, let's put that logic in. So we already got access to the uh, table object uh, just by getting it by ID, BP table. There we see it, we named it BP table. So we've got access to the uh, table object, the, the JavaScript object that represents the table UI element in the screen. So we can say, oh, table uh, set model and then pass it our BP model. There we are. And we got access to the BP model by loading it from the uh, the owner component. It's declared in the manifest, so it, it's there in the in the component of our application. So we get it by its ID as well. So now we're um, we're binding the two together. And a couple other settings here: table set entity set. There can be multiple entity sets within an OData service, remember? Like we had a purchase order header and item. So we have to tell which entity set in the uh, OData service we want to use. Business partners. That's good. And one last setting here. O table set initially visible fields. So we have to tell which of the fields from the OData service do we want displayed in the table. We'll just go ahead and hard code the columns here that we want partner ID and company name and partner role. And actually to do that as one string. Sorry about that. So partner ID, company name, partner ID, company name, partner role. That looks good. There we go. Let's save that. And we're starting simply here. We'll, later we'll see how we can do things like setting the uh, visible fields dynamically. Uh, but let's let's start very, very easily here. Um, so that's basically it. We're, we're done with our application. Let's see, I've saved everything that's open. Let's, uh, let's change our run configuration so that we'll test our data basic application. Say save and run, that'll pick up our changes, and then it will immediately open our application. And what we see here, our overall frame, OData basic exercise, business partner list, and we've got our partner ID, our company name, and our partner role. Um, so very, very simple example, very basic, but focused on how we can define the uh, OData service declaratively in the manifest, bind it to our UI control, um, middle, minimal amount of coding. Most of that was from the template, kind of boilerplate, like I said, error handling and, and stuff like that. The actual amount of lines of code that you need to connect up your OData service was just really, you know, what the the two lines of code to to, to bind and tell it which entity and then uh, to tell it which columns we wanted to to display. Of course, we still have other columns here. We can come in and configure this um, dynamically at runtime. I could also look at uh, the email addresses, for instance. Um, it, you know, but we wanted to set an initial set of, of columns. Otherwise, nothing would be displayed uh, to the user. So that's a very basic uh, OData example. In our next video, we'll move on uh, to slightly more complex scenarios where we'll see how we can use the metadata object even for a bound um, uh, uh, declaratively defined OData service to dynamically uh, create our columns.